leaving the Crescent Meadow Trailhead for the start of our hike. It's a uh, beautiful day. It's probably upper 60s, sunny, clear. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Beautiful. Wow, this has wasted no time getting into amazing scenery. The High Sierra Trail. It's a linear 60 mile trail in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. Located entirely within Sequoia National Park, the HST links the groves of massive sequoia trees in the west side of the park with the high alpine territory to the east, including Mount Whitney, which is the trail's eastern terminus. To avoid a long complex car shuttle and to make the hike a bit longer, we decided to do this as an out and back yo-yo hike. We had 10 and a half days for the round trip and hoped to make it to Mount Whitney as our turnaround point. This is the story of our adventure on the High Sierra Trail. What just happened? We saw a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good size full-grown bear i don't know i wouldn't even say 30 yards no i wouldn't either <laughs> but it was around the corner and the sun was in his face or her face but i just said bear and uh <laughs> it turned around and went away ran or up the, ran think, up the trail the same way we're going yeah or uh, maybe up into the woods brings your attention back again in yeah, a hurry it didn't want anything to do with us it was very pretty Bear. And we're at what four miles into our <laughs> something like 130 that. mile hike. Hey bear. Hey bear. Hey bear. Hey bear. While hiking the Pacific Crest Trail in 2021, I made friends with a strong and light-hearted hiker named Gwig. I had not seen her since. But here on the High Sierra Trail, while looking for a campsite at the end of the first day, Bandanas and I saw a smiling solo hiker coming up the trail. It was Gwig. What an unlikely and beautiful encounter. This is Gwig Page from PCT. This is a, uh, ran into her out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> What are the odds? <laughs> yeah. We set up camp together and chatted into the night. Oh, you don't have to check the backpack. Like, but they smell salty. Somebody smells like vegetable soup here. Who is it? <laughs> no, you're not supposed to do that. You're totally <laughs> checking it out. <laughs> no. <laughs> The next morning, Bandanas and I departed camp before Gwig, but we hoped to group up with her again during the day. They're both carrying 
really heavy packs because we have some 10 or 11 days worth of food. Because of the remote nature of this trail, there were no opportunities to resupply. The 10 and a half day, 40 pound food carry would be our largest ever. Some food didn't fit into our three bear canisters. So we camped near bear lockers the first night to properly secure the excess food. The High Sierra camp that's out of service for a while. And this is the uh, ranger station out here. So we're heading toward that, that falls right there, and evidently we go right across the top of it. But a uh, hiker we just met, he said it's safe crossing, nothing to worry about. Just as we finished the crossing, Gwig caught up with us. A few miles later, we set up camp near Lower Hamilton Lake. You're so pretty. Away a gap. We're very happy that you <laughs> 
<laughs> He's like, I'm gonna come in and bite you in the hand. <laughs> How's the trail going today? <laughs> Is it? Well, it was we were dancing on sun cups. Mm -hmm. Do we stayed on trail the whole time? I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> the little side adventure. As we consumed our food, the packs got progressively lighter, and we became accustomed to the altitude. This allowed us to hike further each day. Good morning. Yeah, I know I'm messy, but I have hot water, and I'm very happy. <laughs> and it's sunny out. But I do have to go instead. That's funny. We <laughs> waited out for a while, and it's also just like I really, I do really love it. It's like. Cayuga Falls. Yeah, look at that. Oh my god. That's wild. Nice big squiggle. This is the spring. And it's piped over to here. Working the blowdown.
Junction Meadow, Mosquito Meadow. <laughs> and here's the Kern River, one of the quieter portions we've seen. Well, the GoPro is officially dead. First swim on this trip seemed to have got water in it. It's done. So I didn't get a lot of shots I would have loved to have got, but that's what these are for, is to take them out and beat them up, and eventually they give up. Leaving our campsite at the Kern River marked the beginning of our trek up Mount Whitney. The summit was 1.2 vertical miles, or 6,400 feet, above us. So you've been here before? Supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't remember? Or you kind of remember? Uh, maybe, vague yeah. river crossings. We're on the PCT. We're on the PCT. Which way did we walk before? And we went that way. We can see about 30 yards worth of trail and for some reason can't recognize it out of the two and a half thousand miles of trail. <laughs> I don't know why. To Voyager AC for, for promenade or to add PCT? I live in Montpellier. Montpellier, permanently. Okay, I that's what I thought. Here, I am here just for the PCT. Just for the PCT. Okay. <laughs> this is Sandy, and that's Sandy Meadow, 10,648 feet above sea level. And it's beautiful, as is Sandy. <laughs> we were now within eyeshot of Mount Whitney, and just five miles from the summit, but the clock had run out. It had taken us five and a half days to get to this point, and we only had five days for the return. We had to start back the next morning. The final ascent up Mount Whitney, a 10 mile round trip, was out of reach. Unless we could hike up Mount Whitney at 2 a.m., watch the sun rise and the moon set, and be back to Guitar Lake for breakfast. Gwig and I decided to do it, but anticipating five more days of high alpine trekking, Bandanas opted out of this exhausting and sleep depriving plan. 8.30, arriving at Guitar Lake. Over the previous several days, we had befriended another hiker named Trout, who was at Guitar Lake when we arrived and helped us find a beautiful campsite. We had just four hours to sleep but sleep didn't go well. We later learned from a ranger that this was a failed rescue attempt to save a hiker on Mount Whitney who had life-threatening altitude sickness. The ranger stayed on the mountain the rest of the night trying to keep the hiker alive. It was the summer solstice and a full moon and a wonderful night to ascend Mount Whitney. At 14,000 feet, as we started our final traverse across the ridgeline towards the summit of Mount Whitney, the sun began to rise. Having both been to the top before, we stopped before the summit. We were on an east-facing cliff between two of Mount Whitney's characteristic spires. It was 30 degrees and windy, so we bundled up and then watched the show. Five thirty AM. Sun's just come up. And the moon hasn't yet set. The sun was up, the moon had set, and we were cold. 
it was time to descend to Guitar Lake for breakfast with bandanas. Not long after sunrise, there was another attempt to rescue the hiker who was struggling for his life on Mount Whitney. We watched as the hiker and a ranger dangled on a rope beneath the helicopter. The rescue was successful. The hiker was expected to fully recover. Now reunited with bandanas, we packed up and descended to Crabtree Meadow, where we hoped to rendezvous with two friends who were hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. Diamond is a hiker that Quig and Happy Hour knew from their 2021 Pacific Crest Trail hike. He was hiking the PCT again. We didn't find him that day, but Gwig later encountered him while he was in town for a resupply. Kandu was a friend of happy hours from the Colorado Trail. After perusing the area and talking to numerous other hikers, we finally found him. It was a brief but wonderful reunion. Bandanas and I then headed west on the second half of our yo-yo hike. Sadly, we were leaving Gwig, our beloved hiking companion. The next morning, Gwig would once again climb Mount Whitney, but this time she would descend to the east, finishing her High Sierra Trail hike at Whitney Portal. Mosquito Flats. Yeah. <laughs> Junction, Meadow. Junction Meadow. We didn't intend to stay here tonight because we stayed here on the way out and there's tons of mosquitoes. But it kind of ended up that way. So. And this time we're ready before we go in. <laughs> ah, nice. Cooking in the tent and still got a mozzie in the water heating up for coffee. So. Now it's mozzie free coffee. We're sizing up our food and we have three full days to go. We have three breakfasts sitting here and three dinners and plenty of snacks so we're in good shape. Milking the last hundred or so miles out of these shoes but they're holding up fine.
They were aiming for that gap right there. Kauai Gap. Probably not tonight with these storms building up. Here we are, Kauai Gap. Going to the other side of the Great Western Divide. Well, we intended to camp before the gap, but kind of lost the trail several times and then somehow went by the campsite we were shooting for. And that's the gap right back there. Actually, it's a big basin here. And it's really warm and we're sheltered from the wind. And it was kind of cold on the other side, but it's beautiful here. We had to do a, an accelerated pack up and we got a little rain shower that said, hey, hurry up. So we did and now the sun's out again, but mm -hmm. it's threatening. Those are pretty baby. We would love to share, but we can't. No yep. sharing. We were struck with how different the same trail looked when hiking it again. Of course, the landscape looked different from the opposite direction. But also, much of the snow had disappeared and been replaced by an explosion of blooming flowers. Where are you at? Uh, Hamilton Gorge. <laughs> Is it nutty? It's really nutty. covering up because it started raining. There's a bridge over the Lone Pine Creek. We're heading there. And there's our trail once we cross the bridge.
We're approaching Bucks Creek on the way back for our last night out here and really moving into a lot of haze. Wow, is the haze heavy. We later learned that this was smoke from a 7,000 acre wildfire. Howdy, partner. I just saw another bear. He was going over that, what looks like a, a log down there. Cinnamony brown, beautiful. I think it was a small one. Finishing up the hike, heading back into the woods. The High Sierra Trail. This ribbon, so carefully laid across the range of light, led us away from the chaos of modern society and into a world of divine, natural beauty. And through some inexplicable alignment of the stars, this trail also reunited us with friends from past adventures. For all of this, we will be forever grateful.